Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Today we've got another little contact form for you. We've got a little envelope icon there on the left hand side. When I hover over it, it's going to slide out a little contact form like that. Fill it out, send it off, get off of it, it'll go back to where it was. And this is fixed position so it's going to stay there. And it's fully responsive also. Really easy to do, there's no coding involved in this today. So let's get started, I'll show you how it's done. Let's enable my Visual Builder. And what I'm going to do is enable wireframe mode and delete the row that I've got there. There it is right there. Let's get rid of that one. Go back to desktop mode. Okay, well let's start again. First thing I'm going to do is put a row in. Little green button for a row. I'm going to use a single column for this. And let's put a little contact form in there. Here's our contact form. I'm going to leave it pretty simple. I'm not going to put a title on mine. It's a good idea to put a success message in there. and put whatever you want your submit button to say down below. I'm going to leave mine just like that. Important one, email. This is where you want it to be sent to, which is you at your email or me at my email. You can do a redirect if you want to redirect them to a different page or URL afterwards. I'm going to leave mine just with the message pop up. And let's take the spam protection away. You can leave it there if you want. I'm going to take mine away by just clicking that to no. And you can use Google Capture or a third party spam protection service here. You'd need to add an API key for that. And we've covered that in previous videos. Okay, well, let's just pop a quick background in there. I'll use blue. Well, let's use purple this time, perhaps because we've got those purple icons up the top there. Go over to design. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of spacing all around. Say 25 pixels, just put in the 25, it'll put in the pixels for you. Hit the chain, it'll do the opposite side. Same for left and right. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to change that submit button to white so we can see it a little bit better. So if we go to button, enable custom styles button. There we've got our little submit. Fantastic. Okay, well I'm going to leave my form just like that. Now what I'm going to do is add a little icon that we're going to end up using as a handle for our form. So I've hit the little black button to add a new module. I'm going to roll down, get an icon. I'm going to search for a mail icon. You can roll down and search. There's a lot of them there as they've just added Font Awesome. Or you can click this little icon up here and it'll pop the whole of them out for you there. But I just want to do a search for mail. And I'll use the same one as I did before, that one right there. Okay. There it is, it's popped it in down below there. Let's go over to design. I'm going to make that same color as my form. I'm going to take it down a little bit in size. Say 50 pixels, something like that. Great. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to use a bit of absolute positioning on both the form and the icon to put them where I want them and have a look at our absolute positioning video if you don't know what that is what it does is it positions them within the parent container in this case that's the row we've put them in so i'm going to go over to my advance i'm going to go down to position i'm going to use absolute position and by default it's popped it up in the left hand corner there i want mine up in the right hand corner but i want it slightly over to the right hand side here so what I'm going to do is roll down a little bit more and we've got some horizontal offset. So I'm going to roll it across to where I want it, about there. That works for me because we're going to slide it over here and just use that as a handle to bring it back in. Okay. We'll save that. I'm going to do something similar with my form because I don't want it as wide as this. So I'm going to go into the form. I'm going to go over to design. I'm sizing. I'm going to make it the size that I want. Say 
300 picks. Just put in the 300. It's actually put in 300% there, so I'm going to just change that to PX picks. There we go. It's the size I want it, but it's way over this side of the row. So again, I'm going to use advanced position absolute. I'm going to put it on the top left of our row right there. Now, if you've noticed, our little form has gone behind the thing that's below it there, which is not what we want at all. I want it on front. So if we roll down a little bit more, we've got what they call a Z index there. But rather than do it here, I'm actually going to do it in the row when we've got our row organized and it'll pull everything in front of the row below there. OK. Well, let's save this. And we're going to go into the row itself. I'm going to make this row perhaps 300 pixels wide. So I'm going to go into the row, the green tab for the row. I'm going to go to design, down to sizing. Here's a width. Let's make this 300 pixels, 300 px. There we go. Now our row is 300 pixels wide. And I'm going to align everything over the left hand side because that's where we're going to be pulling it out from. So it's over there now. But we want to make sure it's going to roll on top of everything. So if I put it back in the middle there and we go back to our position here. Here's the Z index. I'm going to pull that up until it pops in front of everything else there. Fantastic. So let's go back to our sizing now under design and sizing. And we'll pop it over the left hand side. Great. Now what I'm going to do, I don't want that rolling up and down the page like that. I want it to be fixed in a certain position over here. So what we're going to do with the row is similar, but we're going to use fixed positioning rather than absolute. So I'm going to go over to advanced. I'm going to go to position. I'm going to switch it from relative to fixed and it'll disappear up the top on the left there. Now I can bring it down with a bit of vertical offset or you can pop it in the middle or at the bottom wherever you happen to want yours. I'll leave mine there. Pop it down a little bit with a vertical offset. So it's somewhere down here or wherever it is you choose to have yours. Great. Now I know I made this 300 wide. So what we can do is transform it so it disappears off the page there. Again, let's go over to our design going to go down to transform and again we've done videos on transform and translate have a look at some of those if you're not sure what this panel does I'm going to go over to the second tab there called transform translate I'm going to uncheck the little chain because I don't want to move it vertically I just want to move it horizontally and what we can do is slide it over until we've just got the icon showing which should be minus 300 pixels there it is right there fantastic but we want to bring it back when people hover over it. Common to most DV modules, if you hover over the dark writing there, you'll see some icons come up. If there's an arrow, click on it. It'll give you a desktop state when your mouse is not on it and a hover state when your mouse is on it. So on hover, I want that bit to be back to zero. There we go. So when they're not hovering over it, it's going to be like that. When they are hovering over it, it's going to be like that. And the amount of time it takes to go from one to the other by default with Divi is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. If that works for you, then fine, just leave it like that. I like to slow mine down for a bit of drama. So go over to your advanced tab if you want to change this. We'll go down to transitions, transition duration. There's the, de there's, there's the default 300 milliseconds. I'll roll mine up to about a second. You can type in a value. You can move the slider and you can increment up and down with the little arrows there too. I'm going to have a little delay on there so maybe tenth of a second say 100 milliseconds and transition speed curve I like to use is easy and ease out. They're all slightly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations but for my hover effects I tend to like to use that one. So let's pop that there. We'll save our changes. Let's take a look at it on the front end save everything we've got. If your purple button's not expanded, just simply go down to your purple button, click on it, hit save, and let's exit the Visual Builder. 
And there we are, there's our little contact form. If I hover over it, it's going to take a second to pop out. Type in what you want, send your message off, let go of it, it's going to pop back in there. Let's just check it on responsive devices. I'm using Google Chrome here, which has got the great inspector tool. So if I hit F12, I've already got mine up here. Take that off. There's the desktop version we just saw. If I click the responsive version on, this is an iPhone 12. There's our little icon. If I click on it, pops out to our contact form. Same again, type in what we want, submit the message. Click off of it, it'll pop back again. Let's have a look at it on a tablet. Here's the iPad Air. There it is yet again. Click on it. There's our little contact form. And as you can see, it's on top of everything else, which is great. The Z index. Click off of it. It'll disappear again. Well, I guess we could check it on a non Apple product. Well, I don't know what a Galaxy Fold is, but let's try it. There it is works on there fine you can still reach everything click off of it it's going to go back and what about a surface or a surface pro there it is on a surface click on it boom there we are so i'm pretty happy with that that works for me change back to desktop there we go guys there is how to create a slide in contact form using absolute and fixed positioning so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.